Alright guys, there it is. I told everybody I'd give you a look at it when it was all done. There is my finished conveyor bed. And uh, you can see the, the diamond plate and all that. It's built with extruded aluminum. It's got the built-in sound system. It's got my laptop for my morning news and radio and all that jazz. It's got a sound system in it up here. And it's got my big beacon light, my safety light, my notebook. And just, it's, it's my bed. It's my generic bed. It's got my e-cig, everything you want. But it's beautiful with the diamond plate and all that jazz. And there you go. There's my bed. Now you've seen it. A deep look into my inner sanctum. Hi there, guys. I'm Chris Bowden, and welcome to The Geek Group. It is Monday, November 28th at 1248 hours. And we're here with Batman, who did indeed find his glasses. And Dave who is so hardcore, he just wears his for cool. We're setting up for paint in the Bolt Depot. Now here's before, a little bit before one o'clock. The room is as ugly as it's ever been. We got a little bit of paint on the wall over here a while ago when we were doing the initial run, but uh, that was just initial temporary testing stuff. And now we're doing it for serious, Batman. Uh. Batman's getting a set up with our awesome Rust-Oleum paint. It's the Zinser brand, but it's actually made by Rust-Oleum because they are the awesome. We're using our big gnarly paint sprayer that was provided courtesy of the Future Girl Foundation who donated that and we have used the hell out of it. I love this thing. And we're hiding the black ugly. So this is what we're starting with. The plan today is to paint all this all through the ceiling and down the hall. I'm going to go, I don't know how far I'm going down the hall, but we're going to figure it out. We're going to go all through here. These are the dark catacomb hallways of going through the core of the building. And I'm going to go all the way to that door, and that's probably my ending point. But getting all the dark catacombs done, and eventually they'll get electricity over to this part of the building, and we'll have lights in the dark catacomb hallways. But what are you doing? Tightening the... Oh, okay. And, uh... ah! It's like a pneumatic fitting. Yeah? Yeah, no. Well, it's a, it's a hydraulic fitting. Oh, yeah. Ready. Here you go. Yeah. Motivated. Yeah. We, got, we got to charge and get the. Yeah, you got you got to do your whole thing. I'm gonna go and put on paint clothes. All right, go put on paint clothes. All right, you guys rock out on that. I'm gonna go get pretty. Hey, when you're done. Yeah. Through the stairs up front. Yeah, I'll, I'll, all right, yeah, seal that off and I'll come in right, because I'm going to change in the locker room anyway, so that's cool. All right, cool. All right, guys, we're taking a break from painting. you got to love the attire. Thank you, Jerry, for the awesome Shader insulation shirt. I'm wearing this one for painting. Um, we got the UPS dude wandered in through the back door for reasons nobody really understands. But we've got big UPS, I think, I don't know who this is from. Let's check and be sure. Hmm, well, that's all the shipping company stuff. Let's see what's in the box. Where's your scissors suck? This is what happens when I don't have my Gerber. Life ain't the same without my girl. Oh, it's an induction heater. An Autotron 3300 induction heater. I had heard about this. So it is what it says it is. It is what it says it is. It is. This came through a, a friend of Joe's. Had this sent our way. Oh, it's heavy. There's all kinds of parts. This is going to be big fun. Somebody was mentioning uh, in a comment to one of the captain's blogs just the other day that we needed an induction heater. And I kind of smiled because I knew this was on its way. We get a lot of comments to stuff, and I just reply people already in the works because they, they don't realize that things here seem to happen impressively fast. And a lot of times, you know, the stuff you see in the captain's wall, a lot of it, like, like the painting in that, has to be 
in progress months before you guys see it because we got to get the paint donated and all kinds of things have to happen. Oh, are you? I should be so lucky. There's no way that's actually something from Polk Audio. Because, oh, how I wish it were. No, this actually says T15 Black Butcher. From Ciprasu for EGR Steve Evil Us. Did we actually get a real pair of monitor speakers? And Polk's no less? Decent monitor speakers? That is so cool. These are, this is the real deal. I, I see, I thought, I was like, oh, somebody got a nice pair of speakers and reused the box, but no. Thank you, Suprasu. Those are nice little, I'm not gonna get too into them because I'm kind of dusty with paint, but uh, let's get a look here. That's a nice pair of monitor speakers. That's awesome. That's really something. Look, I already got paint dust on it. I'm just going to put these right back in the box before I get a mess Thank you, see Prosser. How many want to? Doesn't say. Model T15s. They're nice. Man, I wish I had 50 of those. Oh, use those in the studio. Use those in master control. We have real, we've needed real monitor speakers for so long and I never thought to ask for them. Something I'm looking for out there, you guys, in the world. Back in the 70s and 80s, it used to be pretty popular to have big, floor-standing, shake-you-like-a-British-nanny speakers for, like, main use. These are great for near fields. These are awesome for near fields. But for, like, room-filling speakers, nobody makes them anymore. Okay, the last company to really do stuff like that, outside of the crazy expensive stuff like Apogee's and things like that, the last company to really do that was Sirwin Vega, as far as the home-level stuff. I am looking for big, romping, old speakers. 15s, 12s, 18s, maybe even the elusive Electro Voice 30-inch Wolverine. Yes, such a thing exists, look it up. But I am looking for big, old speaker cabinets because we have several places in the building where we need big, gnarly speakers. Shake you like a British nanny speakers. That's what we're looking for. And a lot of people have these out there because they're sitting in people's basements with the surrounds rotting away because they haven't used them. They upgraded to these nice, high efficiency little things. It's just not the same, okay? I know the wife got all angry and relegated your speakers down to the basement and all that jazz. It happens all the time. That's how I got my speakers. My speakers and my home stereo system are a pair of rectilinear threes that I got when I was in high school from my awesome high school teacher, Kent Blome, who isn't watching this, but he really should be. Kent, that whole internet thing's really gonna catch on. You gotta get involved. Kent got those speakers when he was in college. I'm still using them today. So yeah, I like big, raw speakers. So let's see what's in the other box. I'm guessing this is more of the uh, the induction. That's the same package. Yeah. I was trying to get it started for you. This is quite the tape. Yeah, they're they're serious about this. Here. Oh, the sounds in tears. Huh? I said, oh, the sounds in oh, tears. Oh, staples and tape and just, they're really serious about their packaging. I'm guessing it's a cart. It says cart assembly instructions. Well, there you go. It's set on the floor. Hey, Moose, I got a puzzle for you. Enjoy. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Reach down right to here. Oh, hey. There you go. Turn it, set there. It's a cart, and it's pretty much a simple. So cool. Thank you to the cool guys at Ajax Taco, or Toco? Ajax Toco, I think is how it's pronounced. Ajax, these guys, right here, gratuitous sponsor shot. Thank you guys for sending us an induction heater, which is going to be, oh man, we gotta do the ice thing. We got all, all what we can do with an induction heater. So, yeah. All right, this is gonna be some really cool science. You'll see a lot more on this as it happens. Oh, it's got huge wheels. Those are cool. That was the Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to the mess. Can we help you? Is this the boss? Yes, yes, that is Omni the Wonder Dog. <laughs> um, I'm just here to look around. I emailed you last week. I thought you'd have a better pair of jeans. 
I'm painting at the moment. I'll go home and get you a pair of my old ones. Look, they get away. That's all right. I'm a 32. <laughs> no, we're, we're painting the bolt room at the moment. So that's, yeah. It's... Anyway, I, uh, I emailed you and asked you if I could come out. Uh, okay. And, uh, well, you're welcome to check the place out. We'll get you to I'm the guy that I like the Wimshurst machines. Wimshurst machines. Okay, you're that guy. Yeah, I'm Yes, guy. I remember that guy. Yeah. yeah. Did you bring any with you? I brought pictures. Hey, I know what they look like. Well, no, I'm not mine, you don't. Okay, well, you gotta bring some down. We'll do a video, we'll make some sparks, we'll talk about how they work, you can do a whole thing of them. Yeah, I might do that. Yeah, it'd be fun. I've, I saw one a few years ago. And we so built one a while back. Did you? 2006. Yeah. How, how big? A big one. Huh? Yeah. Well, the first one I built was like, uh, what was this guy? It was a 14 inch. Oh! I built some smaller ones. And What's the smallest you've ever done? Uh, big is easy. I mean, they made them like 10 feet. I want yeah. to see one like that. Well, I was going to make some out of a CPE disc, but I didn't. Oh, that'd be cool. I, I made two real nice little ones out of uh, uh, acrylics. They're 8 or 9 inches. Okay. And they work real well. I gave one this kid that comes over with his dad that helped me out with lawn work. And he, he Do you do it with like lighting jars and everything? Or? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, you want to... Yeah, we'll check it out. I want to get you a tour. I'm in the middle of painting at the moment. Okay. Um, and I've got to get that done because right. I can't. I don't want to get a dry line. But let me show you a couple things. All right. right. What's your name? Doug. Doug. Chris Bowden. Chris? Yeah, my pleasure. I'm really interested in that, that big... Uh, you want to see it? Yeah. All right.
You guys have fun. That's that room. We'll be back after lunch. All right, there you have it. Focus is gonna go nuts because the whole room is white. But uh, there's the bolt depot. This will be the uh, storage area for all of our fasteners sponsored by boltdepot.com. We're calling this room our bolt depot. So this whole area right there, all this, is gonna be it. Dog's been supervising, you can see her out there. Here, I'll take you down through here. This was all ugly, nasty tile. Now it's all white. Here's the uh, catacombs down through the middle of the building. You go straight ahead, it puts you into the wood shop. Down the stairs takes you to computer lab. Up these stairs takes you to the lobby. And uh, there's our big air filter. Real fun trying to paint in a wind tunnel and hard shadows. That was, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a fun time. So you guys have fun, and uh, let me get on to the next thing. So I'm sitting here in my office and I'm working on a laptop. I'm doing a distribution upgrade on this laptop to uh, Ubuntu 11.10. Now, this laptop already has Ubuntu 11.10 and all the recent updates. Here's my idea, and I'm posing this out just to the internet at large while I'm sitting here completely covered in paint. Um, <laughs> okay, when I do a distribution upgrade, it's reaching out to the internet, to Ubuntu servers, Canonical, all that, and it's pulling down uh, at this point, 1,513 different packages, files, and it's doing so really, really slow because it has to do it over the internet. Now, here's a question I have. What about if somebody out there, like on the development team, adds another uh, a little uh, button, okay, a clicky button, that says, would you like to search your local LAN for these files? Because those files exist right here, and both these computers are on the same local network. It'd be really cool if there was a thing in here, and this is Linux, so anything is possible. If we had a little thing where it said, would you like to search the local network, and, in, and instead of just reaching out to Canonical, it can say, oh, hey, there's another computer. In fact, there's several dozen computers on your local LAN that already have all these files, that have everything I need. I don't need to tax your internet, tax the servers, and all that jazz. I could just get these locally, and I can do it at like 10 times the speed. Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't this be simpler and easier and a lovely thing to do to be able to just fetch the files off the local network and go <laughs> because we don't need to steal them, we can just copy them. And then everybody's happy. And wouldn't that be a lovely place to be? Here's the awesome floor grate for the big giant floor drain in the basement made by the great and fabulous Joe Simon. And uh, he welded it all up. This is composed entirely of scrap metal from the old heating system that we pulled out of the building. So, good job, Joe. And uh, we also have the big fire emergency ladder that we don't actually need. I just, I, I agree with Joe that it would be a really good idea to have. So, we're not required by code to have it, but we're gonna build it anyway just because we can, and hey, really cool use for recycled parts. So, my job now is, now that Joe has made them, is to get them all cleaned up and pretty and sand the rust off and get them primered and I'm going to paint the grate yellow I'm going to paint the ladder red. What you doing Batman? Sorting drill bits. Yeah? Because my life's just so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your system here? Well, I have a lot of these numbers that are already existing from this being in Kalamazoo and um, I'm just trying to get them all sorted out they're not in order because she skipped a couple when she originally labeled this, so I got like some odd ones here and here. So why don't you relabel the? Well, I will. It's, it's I'm just, just getting these sorting it out right now. Oh, and then you're gonna. Then I'm gonna go through and um, if I gotta look up, make sure, but um, I gotta figure out how to use the metric part of this. I'm pretty sure if it fits loosely in like the one eighth, if it fits a little loose, but it doesn't quite fit in seven. Uh, 64th, it's supposed to be 3.18 millimeters. I'm not quite sure if that's how it works. Okay. I'm, gonna find, I'm gonna find out. And once I do that, then I'll get like this to be metric or whatever. Well, what you do for initially learning the system, mm -hmm. grab a pair of calipers and print yeah. out a conversion chart, and it'll and then you can read them with just with you know well, digital mic. To, but yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. 
I'm just kidding. We get a lot of drill bits. We have a lot of drill bits. A lot of quarter inch and 1764. We go all the way back here it's, with them all. It's full all the way up in there. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Wow. But we have no number 10s. I don't know. We need number 10s and yeah. 8s and 15s. I gotta have a way to find out. Like, I need a bigger gauge that gives me every size of drill bit besides just stand. Because like, I could have number 10s in here. I just don't know what the hell the number 10 looks like. Um, it's between I, 9 and 11. Yeah, gee, thanks. Um, <laughs> I've never really been much knowing the different drill bits of sizes. You know, well, you're learning I didn't even now. know there are letters for drill bits. Oh, yeah, there. yeah. Um, my expertise in drill bits was, oh, this looks about the right size drill hole. <sighs> well, now you're, you oh, know, the amazing. tool room manager. So yeah, now I'm a tool room manager. Now, now I have to learn. Like today I learned the difference between plastic bits and normal bits. The, the, um, the nose angle? Actually, I think that is plastic. That, that's plastic bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the yeah. nose angle? Yeah, that's Gosh. what I learned today. So. Oh, wait until you learn the difference between TIN and Cobalt and all that jazz. It'll be all sorts of fun. You, you could have a conversation with Rick. He'll teach you everything you ever want to know about drills. Oh, boy. And remember, they're not drill bits. They're drills. They're drills. They're drills. Oh, this is a thing, though. It's a thing. The excitement that is your afternoon. That's all right. I got clean. <laughs> well, I can't fault you for that. Oh, that's going to make some of course, so, right in here, I'm roaming. I can't, you know, you'll use my Pandora or anything, so it's like the five Queen songs I just so happen to have on my SD. You know there's Ethernet to this room. Yeah, but that doesn't help my phone. So use a computer. You just you well, put on speakers. Well, out earlier, room. earlier, I had your radio here right next to this wall while you're painting. I had Moose's radio, and I had radio right above me going. So I just grabbed headphones it's so and It's hard being you. It is. It's, it's just terrible. so hard. You and the dog. It's just, man, your lives are hell. I know. It's so terrible. <laughs> After this, though, I'm going to go play with the CNC. Okay. That's my reward for the day. Moose has been testing out new stuff out there. Yeah. Well, she's like, I'm hogging the sheet router all today, so you can play on the computer, though, if you want. I was like, all right, that's fine. Okay. I'm loving the software for it. She showed me it yesterday, and I'm just having a blast. Well, cool. I'm gonna go see how your brother's doing. He's been down masking sheep room all day. Oh fuck. Yeah. Hey, I got the hallway. Well, it's, it's all made. square though. Yeah, I got this, the hallway. This down. was a pain in the butt, you know, hallway turn, stairwell, you know. Oh, I know. I had to paint it. Yeah, I had to mask using, it. Using that light in there for painting? Oh, that was a joy. I bet it was. Every moment a treasure, I tell you. Alright, I'm gonna go check on your brother. Alright, have fun. Dang! What you doing? Masking. Yeah, you've been on this all day. Uh, it's, it's, I do make the first half. Yeah. Focus is freaking out. Oh, there's people walking by out there. So this is your project du jour? Mm -hmm. Will we be ready to paint down here tomorrow? Try the hardest. Okay. It's close. It's it's looking nice. I mean, all you got, well, you got to do window and the floor, and the floor is easy. Mm -hmm. What is all this? Um, Pulled those metal plates off that the boiler system used to sit in front of. Yeah. And uh, that kind of came with it. Okay, we got to have all this cleaned off before we can paint. Yeah. What is that? I thought it was paint at first. It's like stucco. It is. It's stucco. Stucco? Great. That or a thin coat that it just got horribly baked over the years. Nice skin coat of plaster. And it's just it is, yeah, because it's flat on the front. It's plaster. <laughs> Tasty. Yeah. It's not as good as the wall candy that mom used to give us, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go see if the hallway's dry, and if it is, we can pull masking and bring it down here. Okay. All right. Have fun. All right, so it's after hours, we're hanging out, and we got this in today. Joe showed up, of course, after all the work's done, Joe shows up. And we, we yeah. got for a little. I know it's you and your real job. See, yeah. this is this is this is a proper job. <laughs> Hard at work here. Okay. So we got uh, an Autotron induction heating system donated by Adam over at Ajax, and you hooked this up. This was totally your thing. Yeah. Adam and I have talked about the Geek Group, and he thought this was pretty cool, and and I asked if he would, in his 
goodness, donate to the Geek Group an induction heater so we could learn about the science of induction heating and he was cool with it. He, he, yeah, this is, we're going to do like real videos on And he's got not just the induction heater but the cart and all the attachments and instructions. Yeah, we got like a ton of different heads for it and there's there's a little foot control. Yeah, there's cool. all kinds of fun stuff. Alright, so this is the Bolt Pro head. Bolt Pro head, yeah. So that's, you want to show the coolest little show little? and tell because It'll take this nut, as I'm holding onto the bolt and nut. It'll turn that nut red hot. All right, you want to try it? Yeah, go ahead and step on it, turn it on. We're okay, on. It's on now. Light's on, and we're drawing like, it's cranked up all the way. We're using barely any power. But I can take my finger and stick it in there, and you know, nothing's happening. Yeah, it's totally safe. But I would take this nut, and we drop it in there. And it's getting hot already. Here, let's, let's not touch Whoa. it. Whoa, it'll be fine. Really? Yep. Oh, OK. I'm holding on to the bolt, and the induction heat's going into the nut. I can see the nut changing color. And it should be red hot in just short order. How close can it's I get, already the getting there. To this thing? Oh, the camera's fine. Okay. You're outside of the field. Oh, and we're at red hot. There's cherry. Yeah, that's, that's cherry red. That's it's transferring a bit to the bolt, so I'm going to quench that. Okay. But that's sizzle hot. But the induction is so quick that the bolt doesn't get heated up. That's cool. And so if you have a bolt that's stuck, a nut that's stuck, you can take that thing and heat it and quench it and have that thing break loose like nothing. Kick it again, that thing will go dry in a second. Look at that big hop in there. Boom. That's cool. That's really neat. So you're going to have some fun with that. So what are some of the other heads we got for it? We'll, we'll give people a quick overview. Okay, we have... Yeah, this one looks like fun. <clears throat> the Magna Popper. Okay. The Magna Popper. Magna Popper. This has a very concentrated point, like a torch. Okay. Hold on to that, I'll cut the, the little strap there. So now, can you actually use this like a cutting tool at all? Like cutting holes and stuff? Or anything like that? And the, the plug is pretty cool because it... He, he had a question for you. They, can yeah. you use it for cutting torch? I don't think so. Okay. This is more, more for melt precision heating. Like, okay. yeah. Well, this okay, would I'll probably work really good for a moose doing her branding stuff, though. We'll use uh, this pipe. In, in okay, this. you ready? Yeah, go ahead. You're heating up galvanized, so you're going to be getting. Uh, yeah, you, you, don't, get you don't want to breed this. You should get a nice little spot in red. Oh, come on, get, get aggressive there. I don't want to melt the end of it. It's temperature tolerant. Well, yeah, but it's pretty too. I don't want to mess it up. What kind of sorcery is this? Oh, there we go. Now, now we're, we're to red, red hot. It just takes a couple seconds. So we got conduit red hat. Who wants a nice little circle branded on them? Well, half circle. We gotta get Batman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's neat. All right. And, and this course, is this is totally cool to the touch. This is this is perfectly safe. I mean, it's it's not even warm. That's that's neat. This that's thing science. will come in really handy for a lot of projects and a lot of good science. Now, what are the other ones we have for it? We have a frame pro. This is awesome. A frame pro. A frame pro. This is their biggie. This is that big daddy one. Vicious. Uh, need something to. It's got like a fiberglass plate up. Need something to heat that would well I guess we can use a piece of conduit again. Do you want something bigger to heat? You got something flat and steel? Flat I and just steel. pulled something off the wall down in cheap room. It's gotta be steel. I think it's steel. Where's it at? Down uh moose is getting some. Yeah, moose is getting some. Okay, I'll put that one down <clears throat> Demon out! Demon out! Careful, he's got that steel plate. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the, you the can big press the button. button. Yeah. You can hold your hand on it. Yeah, it's, it's, there's if you nothing don't have to jewelry it. on, I would hate to. Yeah, I don't want to get my watch too close to it. I hate to think of somebody with uh, cheap jewelry and melt it oh, on their man. finger. That would, yeah. Oh, hey, yeah. We just cut out the window okay. for Project Stomper. And okay. this is put, just... it on, put it on the back side. Put it underneath there. Okay. Right watch out in the middle. You ready? 
Yeah. Just step on it. All right. Wow. Wow. Feel that I'd paint. say that's hot. <laughs> that's hot and that's hot right now. You got cherry red. I wonder if we can distort that really easy. Here, let's poke on it. <laughs> Alright, somebody needs to hold the metal. Metal hold. Okay, there. <laughs> okay, we're on the smoky cool. thing outside. Oh man, it smells beautiful, doesn't it? <laughs> it smells like love and starshine. Oh. <laughs> it's a day of awesome odors. Yeah, it's a whole day of stink here. <laughs> this is cool. Got any piercings? Or you leave that away from me. Far away. So, we just gotta put, for the Batman brand, we just put a metal symbol here and put the probe there. Yeah, it just works <laughs> right, right into in. the skin. Yeah. You're gonna cry for like a month oh, after right. you do that. We talked to our. That's vicious. Our, our okay. house physician. Let's look at the little. There's some edges on that. Too. That's cool. Yeah, that's that's a raw cut up. Ready? Do it from under and do it like a plate. Okay, here we go. Water inside is boiling. Kind of like burning galvanizing for, you know. Yeah, that's healthy. Keeping, every, keeping everybody healthy. Yeah, don't breathe that, guys. That's bad for you. I can see you it can right inside. You, you can slightly, you can feel a little bit of the induction vibration. I'm going to flip it over. The lights are kind of. I cook a hot dog on that. You no. Inside. Put a steel rod. Oh, you put a nail in the hot dog, you cook it. Yeah. <laughs> so you get metal skewers with the hot dog. Yeah, yeah. You have hot dogs. That's the like cherry seconds. red. You can roast marshmallows from the inside out. <laughs> Whoa. That's neat. Well, thank you to Adam and the cool guys at Ajax. Ajax Toko. Ajax Toko. You guys rock. You're going to see a lot of videos on this. We're going to do a whole series. I'll, I'll get you in a camera crew and just let you have fun. Well, we need a purpose. I'm sure we can come up with one. Whatever will we do with this? Uh, you know, for your fittings, your cast iron fittings that are, you know, old plumbing fittings that yeah. are out there, you take this, you go up there, you heat it up, and you just take the fitting, warm it, and you just unscrew it. I just like, like that. I already have one. Yeah. There's that lug nut that was butchered on Old Blue. Oh yeah, yeah. I you, you just this yeah. is one of those things you get. It's like man, we can use that. Yeah, this is yeah. this this is what this is is one of those rare and unusual and expensive tools that normal people don't own, right. and they come here to have the opportunity to use. Exactly. So this is absolutely perfect for the geek group. So thank you to Adam, thank you to Ajax, Toko, and all you other fun guys out there. Thank you to all the members and sponsors that support the Geek Group. And thank you to Joe for making this happen. Because I have nothing to do with this. This is totally you. I, so I just, this they, is awesome. They like, to, they like the Geek Group. So. Well, cool. We're going to make them a half dozen videos on this thing. And they can put them on their website and get them some good press out of the deal. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, you guys have fun. That's today's Captain's Blog. We got the bolt room done. Tomorrow we're doing a sheep room painting. And we're going to continue rocking out. I'm Chris Bowden. I'll see you next time. You'll have fun with that. Got any piercings? Or you leave that away from me. Far away. <laughs>